Inspiration Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. As always, with my very good friend, Jose Noya. Ryan is taking a week off this week. He's not with us, just me and Joe steering the ship today. How are you doing, Joe? I'm really good, Lee. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. I keep flicking between Jose and Joe. I need to stick to Jose. That is the brand name that we are going for. So I'll stick to that. Thank you, everyone out there, for joining us. If you are watching with us live on YouTube or TikTok, we really appreciate you. Just uh, J Noya underscore Inspiration Nation on TikTok and just search for Jose Noya Inspiration Nation on YouTube and you will find us. Hit subscribe. It will tell you when we are going live. You will hear the five minutes as waffle as my microphone didn't work if you were watching live. And who could ask for better than that? Um, And, of course, Twitter, just follow us at listen to i and listen to t-o-i-n to show your support for the show right joe that's enough technical difficulties and rambling let's get on with this what are we talking about this week we are talking about now you know i've been doing this i've been serializing this book seven habits and i'm continuing to serialize it uh so because it's one that i've always wanted to serialize and it's such a great book honestly i hope everyone's seen the seven habits of highly effective people um i think the we got to first things first as the habit number three. So I want to go into habit number four today. So habit number four is getting a win win. That is what this is about. So Lee, if I say to you, you're talking to someone, you're discussing with them and you want an outcome. And if I say win win, what comes to mind? For me, I would guess that win win means that you both get something from the situation. So you propose something to me, I benefit, you benefit, win-win. Yeah, absolutely. So that is exactly what it's about. So what tends to happen, though, when people are negotiating or trying to get an agreement, what tends to happen usually with people? What tends to what, what do people tend to want to gravitate towards? What's I the think, natural, do you think? I think the natural is back to an acronym, acronym, easy for me to say, that we like to use of WIFM, which is what's in it for me. So it becomes very one-sided as you concentrate on what you're getting out of a deal. You're good. Can you hear me? There we go. You're back. You're back. Can you hear me, Lee? Yes, I can hear you now. I'm going to continue. I don't know if Lee can actually hear me. I'm back. I don't know if it's me or you. It might be me, but I don't know. So win-win. So you're just going to lose. right? So if you're winning, the other person usually, usually what happens, they lose, right? So Stephen Covey talks about the win-win. We should always strive for the win-win. And he talks about you know, when we're in a conversation, when we're trying to get an agreement with something, we tend to either go for the win, so the other person loses, so we go, yeah, we feel great, and uh, you lost. Or you tend to go, oh, do you know what? I can't be, I can't be asked. I tell you what, you just take that, and I don't, I'm not bothered. So that's a, that is, so you've got win lose, where you win and lose, but you also then lose win, where you lose and they win, but no one feels great. No one feels great about it. So you either feel, oh, do you know what? I can't be bothered. You just do it, and you just, you just submit into it. And the other part of this, there is actually something called no deal. So there's win, lose, as I said before, I win, yeah. you lose. There's lose, win, where you lose, I win. And there's no deal where you can just walk away now that, and, and win, win. So walking away is great. That's fine. You can do that, which is good. But what we want to aim for is win, win, so we get a good way where both people feel they're getting something or think they're getting something out of it, which is a great way to move forward and develop relationships. So this is what I'm going to talk about, really. And I will read something out from the book. Um, so when we are in discussions, there's something as well. When we, when we say get a win-win, there's something called the emotional bank account. As, so Lee, do you remember, do, we talked about the emotional bank account we before. We have talked we about have, this before. I cannot remember an episode number. I might sneakily look one up for you. Let's take a guess and say 73 and I see how close I am. But yeah, so the emotional right. bank account, as in putting positive credits in your thoughts towards people, that sort of area, am I right? Yeah, so am when I you three like- for three so well, far today on my test? You are on fire, you're on this. fire. I pay attention so you, to the podcasting. You, you're, all, you're all over this, right? So it's literally when you meet someone for the first time, you've probably got a, like a, you're, 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 you're not right in your bank account but you start to have a, you start to have a discussion and then suddenly but due, due depending on the emotions if you are if you if you are connecting or building rapport you're building a plus in that amount of bank account so if you start making mistakes people are more likely to forgive you right but your bank will account start shrinking but if you start off on a, on a footing which is you know like say you want to you you want to like win and you want them to lose right and you're in that situation what happens then is you start off in a negative, right? You start a yeah. negative, and then if you make a mistake, they're more likely to sort of try and undo you, try and 
stitch you up, whatever it might be, right? So that's what we're aiming for. So what's this got to do with every everyday life? What, so Lee, what's your pretend, what, so I'm going to ask you, how do you go through your negotiations or, or when you're negotiating? This could be with your beloved, this could be with co-workers, it could be any form of life. What's te- what's your, what do you tend to lean on? And how do you tend to, to, to go with these things? Can negotiate? I give you two answers on this? Yeah, you can. So when I was younger, I think I would very much go for the sell of an idea that has a benefit for me in it. And I think a lot of my world would have been naively with that that view upon it. So I've definitely I've definitely lived that life, so to speak. And I would now in fact there's a number of things I'm doing right now that I can't really talk about because they're they're real life and we're happening as we go, where I'm using that kind of mentality. There's people I'm very conscious of building a relationship with, working with, and I want to make sure that there is that kind of emotional credit in the bank account so that, you know, there will be times when I will not, I was going to say F up. So I say F up. It happens. It happens say with it, everyone. It's, it's, and I want to make sure I've got those type of relationships with people where that two-way street isn't a problem and you can work together and get on well. But that doesn't happen without laying a bit of the groundwork to have that, that relationship i think you know it's nicer to get on with people and it makes things easy with work as well so i'm very the fact that i can pull off two or three examples where i'm doing that sort of win-win mentality now shows me that i've moved from where i was i was before and i, I would want to you know i could say you know that's what i do i put this stuff in place but it's most definitely not always been the case and i think that's an important message to people you know you can start working on this now it can become you even if it's not and having lived both sides of the fence you get better results and you just feel better as a person in doing it this way as well i think probably yeah, a long answer right. there no no but no you're right because you do feel better as a person don't you because if someone if you can both get a win of it you both go away thinking oh i've got a good deal there we've both got something out of it we're like we're connecting and we've got something out of it that we can we don't feel bad coming out of that conversation we might have had to give something some uh, something but ultimately we've got something out of it we both come out of a win and so, so i'm with you lee so yeah when i was younger you know i, I wouldn't really think consciously about that those interactions with people i wouldn't feel i wouldn't feel consciously about it so now it's about i want you to feel conscious about when you are trying to negotiate whatever it is so you know if you're trying to like for instance you know you're trying to get a, a good deal on whatever service you're trying to get i'm always very conscious about hey yeah i want i want to pay this amount but i want to be fair i want to be fair but also i want to pay you a fair amount but i don't want to like absolutely knock you right down i want it to be that i feel like i'm paying a fair price and that you're getting a fair price i think that's where i want to go but it's what it's also saying it's also saying about you also don't want to be capitulated so some people are going to come back to you and go they want to win right so they'll want to do that to you win-win doesn't mean you just capitulate because you're then in a win they're winning you're losing situation so yeah. when you get the challenge is to challenge that someone i want to read something from the book which actually illustrates this point um, that i highlighted um, so i'm going to read it out i know i've done this before with the other book that i've read out on this podcast called the the as lee would call it the thing the thing the thing and the thing um, but it's not <laughs> the thing the thing the thing it's the seven habits of highly effective people so this is what um this is this is a really interesting uh, story from the book so Stephen wrote this and I call him Stephen because he feels like feels like a, feels like a personal friend. He's unfortunately passed away, but he's left a great legacy. Anyway, here he is. So he talks like this. He says, I worked with a client once, the president of a large chain of retail stores who said, Stephen, this win-win idea sounds good, but it's so idealistic. The tough, the, the tough realistic business world isn't like that. There's win-lose everywhere. And if you're not out there playing that game, you just can't make it. All right, I said, try going for a win-lose with your customers. Try going for a win-lose with your customers. Is that right? Well, no, he replied. Why not? I'd lose my customers. Right. So then go for a lose-win. Give the store away. Is that realistic too? No, there's no margin, no mission. Okay. So as we considered the various alternatives, win-win appeared to be the only truly realistic approach. I guess that's true with customers, he admitted, but not with suppliers. You're the customer of a supplier, I said. Why doesn't the same principle apply? Well, we recently renegotiated our lease agreements with the mail operators and I went in with a win-win attitude. We were open, reasonable, conciliatory, but they saw that position as being soft and weak and they took us to the cleaners. Took them to the cleaners. Well, why did you go for lose-win? I thought you said they took you to the cleaners. They did. In other words, you lost. That's right. And they won. That's right. 
right so what's that called when listen to the mall owner more then expressed his point of view with more courage he would have continued in the win-win spirit until a solution was reached until they both they both felt good about that and that solution that third alternative would have been synergistic probably something neither of them had thought of on his own and that was the example what are your thoughts around any of that it's really interesting how the 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 person he was speaking to obviously had a clear view of what he thought was his mentality and his approach in his way and he, he did like a falsification thing with him to to take him through a journey and make him realize what the the actual is that's the right word actual certainly from Stephen's perspective the actual outcome was against what he was kind of perceiving for himself um, which I presume would have changed his approach to what he was doing quite dramatically. Yeah, because that was a coaching conversation right oh, there, wasn't it? It was like, oh, what, what is that then? <laughs> yeah. And I love that because, you know, that's probably something that I would have fallen into that trap about saying, well, I'm trying to win-win, but I don't want to upset the other person. Yeah. But that's not the point. It's not about whether you upset them. It's about whether there's a fair outcome between the two parties. And I think sometimes that's where we can fall foul because... Uh, you know, I don't know what you know. I know for me, I do like to be liked, right? So that could be potentially one of those things where you could fall foul of that. Oh, would well, you know what? Well, you, look, you get it your way, and I'll just, I'll just negate what I need, so you get what you want. But then that's really a win-lose. It's not a win-win. So there is that element where you need to stand up for yourself, and you do need to say, "Hey, this is what I I want." But there might be some sort of negotiation. But it's about making sure that you are able to express what you want in a way. That the other can consider so they you can both negotiate something that works for both of you right rather than one of you could pitch that if they go do you know what don't worry about it. you just take it all and there is a temptation to do that as well isn't there if someone said to you hey look don't worry about it you just have that it's the other way isn't it 100 percent, yes. they may be saying that but what do you think they might be thinking right they're thinking oh well i can't be bothered look, let them win but then they're never going to come back and do business with you they don't they, you know the, the bank account's going to shrink and the whole thing's going to start falling apart because they felt that the negotiation was too hard. So if it's in a situation, I can ask you, if in a situation, you're, if you've ever, ever had a situation where you've had a negotiation, you've negotiated quite hard, and they've said, don't worry about it, you just keep X. Have you ever had that happen? And if you have, what's been your experience? Well, where they've almost backed out of the situation. They've backed out of it and said, like, don't worry, but you just do it your way. I'm just going to go along and just do with that. Have you ever had that? Yeah, I'm certain. Without, I can't think of any specific examples right now, but without question, there would have been times where are we trying to reach an outcome that involves other people and they would have not wanted to be involved in it and I think it's probably fair to say there could be umpteen different reasons it might have been something they just weren't ever going to be bought into but I dare say that there's probably not enough of that consciousness of the win-win being involved to have you know created a better outcome it's, it's back to the, the control thing and the choices thing we always talk about is you, you've got to look at those sort of situations and think what could I have done differently Sometimes it may be nothing, quite often it will be. And I think almost using that win-win as a benchmark, how well did you do against that, is probably the first question you should ask in those situations. That's almost how you start to self-coach, I would say. Yeah, definitely, I agree with you. And I think there's always that conversation about, don't forget, there's always that other option though, the other option of being no deal, right? You still can go away and say, look, we just can't, you know, I don't want you to lose, but look, we just can't seem to agree at this point in time. Let's just take a break, come back, or just let, let's just don't do the deal. There's that option. I think I really like that because I think there is a temptation um, and think HHXX is asked, do we talk about politics? No, we don't talk about politics. We might do, we might do, but we're not today. We're not smart Hello there. conversation. HH8X, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Um, but there's a temptation when someone says to, to me, and it's tempting to say, oh, okay, good. That's not useful because that resentment can build up. Even though they said that, they're doing it just so you win, but there's going to be resentment and there's going to be backlash off the back of it. Not necessarily straight away, but potentially there could be. And again, you're not building up the bank account, right? So when that happens, what would be a good strategy? And I'm thinking, at least what I'm thinking, a good strategy would be like, no, hey, that's not right either. It's like having the bravery to step in and go, we don't, I still don't want you to lose. Is there something we could do to make this work? Or if not, do we not do a deal rather than getting them to lose and you win? I think that would be a, that would be a great way to navigate that conversation because you're still caring about yourself but also you're caring about the other person to get that win-win rather than taking the win even then they're offering they're offering you the win right they're saying you win right i'm not 
let's have our conversation about let's not there, let them lose either and let's really get a fair outcome and i'm really trying to focus on that and that's something that this book really reminded me of so yeah i'm taking that with me and um and that's something i'm really conscious about and uh, i'm going to be using that a lot more um in fact there's something going on in my life right now at the minute i feel like like i am absolutely losing so i'm fighting to have that better conversation at the same time i'm not i'm not aiming to like get to crush them either i want to have this solution which is we both win out of it in a really conscious and kind way um but sometimes you have to be harder to get someone into that position where you can get that outcome so yeah it's and that's taken a lot of uh takes a lot of work though um and as i say that bank and at the minute i'd say that emotional bank account in that relationship it's quite empty so it's working on that as well so the the, the emotional bank account and the win-win they go hand in hand so negotiations with the bank account and the win-win go hand in hand and you'll know from that conversation how it goes but anyway that's what i wanted to cover and that is the fourth habit look at this there's some great stuff out of this book joe that you're putting out there um and it's great well, as well like you said you can you can relay this to things that are happening right now or things you're putting in place which i think is a really important message alongside we didn't always know these things you get better from through practice and through trying and that's kind of the message we want to we want to share with people well i think sometimes you've got to hear the message quite a few times before you even practice it right yes i think that's yes. what i've like sometimes you hear the message but you don't really hear the message so this is the message i want you to hear like what lee just said when you when you're negotiating with people when you're trying to get something done remember the win-win framework it's a framework that will just make your relationships better maybe you've got your your partner and you're like trying you're arguing over something you're arguing over something. maybe it's a, the remote control i got no idea but can you get a win-win out of that like it can be trivial things it might be with your children it might be with a sibling it, it could be with anybody where you might be trying to negotiate something and you negotiate every day by the way you negotiate every day in your relationships in your life like it might be about getting a cup of coffee who knows right you could use that as a template use that as an as a as, a, as practice to like really be conscious about win-win making sure that you know you're both sharing duties or you know someone's not doing more than you you're trying to be fair maybe you do think actually maybe i look back and go this person does a lot of stuff and i'm really just sitting back you're winning they're losing potentially maybe you need to step in and go hey look let me do a bit of that so again all these things are useful everyday life right everyday life with everybody in your life you could do use this not just business it's everything every relationship this benefits so yeah thank you lee for that that's thank really you for the space good. for this it's a really good topic i enjoyed that and it's, it's something again that like i said i think i'm i can think of where i'm using elements of this. i don't think how you put it there is how i framed it but it's certainly going to reinforce it in my brain as something i'll start using a bit more going forward so this could be with your children as well like by the way this is like a big <laughs> one you know it's, it's a big one uh, but it's hard it's not an easy thing to do um it definitely takes a lot of practice because we, we are we do have that if you're in that type of mindset either you are just giving your power away right or you're in ones that you want to have the power you're trying to balance that off so you've got to recognize your own position of power in that relationship yes. you know maybe you are a leader and you are talking to you know a, a team member there is going to be a natural p balance of power so you've got to make you in that relationship you've got to recognize that hey that maybe my my team member is going to be capitulating because i'm the leader likewise in a family you might be a parent and you might be trying to enforce that parenthood when actually you need to be having a conversation rather than enforce anything, right? We've got to be aware of the power in that relationship as well. Um, and of course, when you're someone might be more, you might perceive someone more powerful than you, it doesn't mean you can't challenge upwards. We have to be conscious of that as well, that we don't give everything away. That could be that your your boss is asking you, hey, can you spare 10 minutes? And actually you've got this, you've got to get away. And, and you're saying, yeah, of course I will, but actually you don't want to, right? You don't want to get away, but you so you want to get away, but you, you're saying, oh, my boss is asking you, but actually you've got to be able to be brave and go, hey, actually today, this is what I've got going on. You know, I'm not able to make it this 10 minutes, right? Depending on what it is. So it's about being brave. It's about being, showing people where you are so you can get that win-win. So you say, hey, look, with your bosses or whatever, or whatever, you say, hey, look, can we do this tomorrow? Is there space? Is this have to be done right now? And finding out what the, um, the parameters of that task are. And that could be family, friends, business, team members, you can apply this anywhere and I, and just remember that, that position of power in respect to this as well that's what i just say anyway thank you lee no it's really good really good stuff in fact that itself we could probably just spin off, off into a whole separate topic so 
going to have to rein you back in there so we don't run Oops. over our usual time. Uh, thank everyone yeah, who's cool. joined us. Again, join us live on TikTok, on YouTube, Jay Neuer, Inspiration Nation. Just search on both platforms, hit subscribe, hit follow, and you'll be notified when we're going live. Follow us on TikTok as well at Listen to IN, Listen T O I N, and get everything to do with a podcast over at inspirationnation.org.uk. Sign up for Joe's le- newsletter, get some merch, all that good stuff. Oh, one thing just before we go, oh, I, I don't got some time. Extra. Someone in TikTok has asked, Are you better than Robert Green? And, and I, I, I don't know Robert Green personally, but I've got his books, but um, St. Laws of Power, um, there's Art of War. I really do struggle with them books. I'm struggling with them books because they they um they they're really I, I just feel they're a bit manipulative. That's my own personal point of view, right? That's that's why. Thank you for the question, though, because but but then he's done a done a podcast with um oh, with the guy, the stoic guy. Oh my god, what's the stoic guy? Lee, come on, what's the, Don't the guy? Don't testing me. I'm, I'm I was stoic guy, three stoic so guy. Far. There's a guy, a stoicism guy, brilliant guy. He's interviewed Robert Green. And um, I thought it was a brilliant podcast. And, and uh, so I sort of changed my view when I, when I heard the podcast. But still, the books don't read, for me personally, not very well. That's just not, for me, I just think they're quite, you know, it's probably, you know, it's about positions of power. But there's a lot of things in there I don't agree with. But that's me. And actually, I talked to a friend of mine, Mark Drager, and he agrees with me. So it depends on this person you are, whether those books resonate with you. But for me, they don't resonate. Um, I've tried them. I'm willing to try, but... They don't resonate. But thank you for the question, by the way, General. I really appreciate it. Really good. And I'm assuming it's the right green we're talking about. It sounds like you spelled it the right way as well. Thank you. Anyway, Lee, I just thought I'd address that because that was a really good point because he talks about position of power and manipulation and stuff like that, you know, where power people won wars and things. And I thought it was really interesting. But I, I struggled. I had to put the book down because it was really not my bag. That's a good, very good question there. What a very It was a great answer. question. Anyone yeah. wants answers like that from Joe, just drop them in the chat wherever you are or send it to us on social media. Right, I'm going to wrap us in now, Joe. Going to count us down. We'll be back next Thank week. You. Three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch you guys later. Catch you guys later. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this Inspiration Nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another video is going live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later. I'm good. Apart from being told to be quiet, that was that was so rude. Yeah. Yeah, people got no no, I was just gonna say people get that treat, don't they? Of that pre the pre that's the bonus content, right? Bonus content right there. Go on, Lee. What are you doing? Are you looking at something? What are you looking at? Is, is it not? Are you Oh, I'll, I'll continue while Lee gets his microphone sorted out. So welcome to uh, Inspiration Nation. This is the 210th episode while Lee tries to sort his microphone out. This sometimes happens. We actually do this really uh, in, in the moment. This is live and this is what happens, isn't it, Lee? And, you know, we haven't got Ryan, our technical guru, this, this week. Um, so this is what tends to happen. Um, so just bear with us. So, Lee, do you want me to – so are we going to kick off? What do you want to do? Do you want to – what are we doing? Are you done it yet? Lee is no. focusing. Oh, there we go. I think I'm back. I think I'm back. Back. Okay. Lee, do you want to just introduce this and then we can crack on? I do. Do you know what? People have got this live, but I'm just going to start again quickly. So this is some good behind the scenes if you are if you are joining us live. Um, if not, I don't know what I've done. My microphone's gone terribly wrong, Joe. Come on, Lee. What's going on? I don't really know what's happening. This is what happens behind the scenes, guys. I, I do apologise. I should have really probably checked this before we started, shouldn't I? <laughs> that might be a good idea, Lee. We'll do that probably next time. in chair. Hey, whilst you're doing that, hey, 
Hey, Moles, thanks for joining. Thank you, guys, for joining. Got any ah, questions? There we go. We're on. We're on. Live? We're good to go. Oh, we're on. We're on. We're on. We're on. Thank you for sticking with us. Thank you so much. Okay. Go on, Lee. Do you want to start again? <laughs> <laughs> we're on it again. This is some great bonus content for those that are, have watched live or are watching back live. But we'll get on it now. Right.